data. Uh, you've got large projects, they take a lot of time, they involve a lot of people, uh, and uh, at a certain point you need to make plans uh, for managing uh, that data during the lifetime of your project and then projecting afterwards to uh, what's going to happen uh, to this data that will be the outcome of your research once your project is over. So uh, can you give some insights into what you do both during and after the project yeah. to manage data? So I, I kind of sit down at, at the start of, of really any project and I think through the kind of logical stages that like, you know, beginning, middle, end, you know, at the beginning there's, there's questions that are being negotiated and developed in the middle, there will be a question that you're trying to answer and by the end you could kind of tweak, adapt, modify that, that question, but it, it's still kind of a response to that middle stage, right? Um, and so I kind of put that into a life cycle, right? And, and at the end, you need to be able to facilitate looking back and at, at what you've done and potentially starting something new or continuing on with a new question using you know, your legacy data at that point. Um, and so I think that it, kind of, it, it doesn't conflate, but it does kind of chunk things out into discrete practices. And I think sitting down you know, before you start anything and having that kind of conversation of, of you know, time frame, commitments, resources that you have, resources that you want, resources that you wish you could have, uh, both kind of financially, uh, personnel and, and expertise wise, and then, you know, monetarily and kind of bringing all of these things together. Um, and so that's kind of my first step to kind of get that big, broad overview picture. Um, and then the I have, a, I have a kind of basic workflow model that, that I work with to kind of manage this, and it's the DCC curation lifecycle model, right? So it, it basically, it puts data like right at the center, right? It's either data or a database or, or you know, metadata if you're me and you actually manage metadata as your role in a project, right? And then it, and it goes through these iterations of engaging with users, engaging with stakeholders, you know, actually sitting down and saying, this is the data we have, but do we need all of it, right, in that process of curation, of, of removing and adding, um, or reformatting and, and linking to, to various iterations. Um, so that, that process kind of makes a, a lot of things kind of move around at the same time, right, but it, it, it helps clarify how technology is helping a humanist actually approach their scholarship, right, so you actually get the digital and the humanities together, right? Instead of saying a humanist who is digital or somebody who is digital doing humanities, you, you get that nice, that nice convergence. To borrow from Henry Jenkins there. Um, it's true, he knew what he was talking about. But so that I think kind of addresses that kind of beginning, middle, end. What do you do when you have data? What do you do to get your data kind of question? All right, well, yeah. I not to ask a pointed question, but mm -hmm. for the after part. Oh, the after part. <laughs> I have never actually gotten to the after part. Like after, <laughs> it's been 10 years and I still haven't ended. So <laughs> I, would, I would very much like to know the after part. Um, I think that puts me in a kind of unique position there where I've, I've been lucky enough to work on the same series of projects. Um, the one, I do have one project that kind of winded down and 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 radically shifted gears for for very for very very good reasons, um, but the kind of after was was very simple because I had carefully documented everything right from that beginning middle end phase, um, kind of planning out projecting. So after was basically a word document I passed off to my boss saying, "Here you go, do do what you want. Like you know where everything is, you know how to find it, you know how to access it, um, you know where the backups are in case." You know, what you end up doing moving forward is not what you imagined. Um, so that, that was actually very simple, very mellow, very low-key. Um, but the other projects that I'm working on are still very much ongoing. And we're planning, you know, for an end being, you know, a curated edition. Um, but it's everything, um, the after would be kind of... We have our digital assets versioned and named and kind of organized hierarchically. And then we have a system of, of scraping RDF 
on a regular basis to maintain queries and, and analyze them. So we kind of view that going on in perpetuity, even after the editorial work is done. Mm -hmm. But that's that's because we work with a really really nice systems administrator who is willing to put up with us like constantly doing that, or at least me constantly doing that, and then asking for programs that would that would automate it. Was it anyhow? Uh, yeah, impromptu. Like before I start my answer, what was the name of the thing that you uh, the the method you use? DCC. DCC curation lifecycle model. And what expands? The, uh, so it's it's actually it was done um, from the University of Athens, um, and then I think it was actually a collaboration with Fourth. Um, shortly after this model came out, they they posed a response to it. So it's basically. It was published in the in the journal, the International Journal for Digital Creation, and it proposes it's very, very high level. And it's just a series of rings that kind of make it, kind of show that there's a sequential logic, but that it's ongoing. Mm -hmm. um, and they color code it, some very nice bright primary colors. Uh, but the, the kind of contribution that the people from Forth and Athens made was saying like, where's the user in this whole problem? Mm -hmm. Right, so the British were very much like, let's get our data organized, and the Greeks were like, but you organize it for users, mm. right? And yeah. the British were like, yes. And it's been, it's been this really interesting kind of collaboration of how do you put the user into the data, and then how do you make the data kind of robust enough so that the user feels empowered to experiment without breaking anything. Mm. So it's it's a very nice kind of set of loops, mm. like like interacting circles. Yeah. I'll look into it. Yeah. Uh, so again, uh, we work uh, with researchers, and I myself don't do primary research. Uh, so the question is how to help researchers uh, uh, manage and maintain their data during the project. Uh, and so the first thing is to go in and try to understand what the goals of the project are at the start, and the goals are probably not going to be the same uh, at the end as they were at the start, uh, but you need to start somewhere. So try and get a scope for the project, uh, uh, try to get an idea of what the needs are go going to be in terms of tools, uh, and Ooh, there's a tiny dog there. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> we'll name this one, um, we'll name this one Bruce. <laughs> Hey Bruce, so the answer to your question, we work together with researchers uh, to help them maintain their data during the research project and the way we do that is by establishing the goals of the project at the start, which will not be the goals of the project at the end, uh, but they give you uh, the initial scope and parameters for thinking about things, decide the tools uh, that would be appropriate for them to use uh, to start collecting data, to start recording data, uh, and then uh, help them uh, select uh, and build their schema uh, for whatever it is they're researching in a way that's going to be reusable and extendable down the line. So make sure that different types of data aren't mixed together, uh, that uh, the uh, salient properties that they're interested in, in investigating are being documented uh, with the right kind of, uh, of data type. Uh, and then uh, I mean, I think it's important, you were talking about the fact that, you know, projects have uh, beginnings, middles, and ends. Uh, when you're talking about a research project, it's a different story for data management than if you're talking about an institution that's looking to put into place a smart data management uh, program. As a, uh, and if you're looking at a research project, it's two totally different stories. And an institution is going to want to apply some sort of standard uh, that's well known and try and bring their practice up to par uh, with uh, well-established practice. If you're doing research, uh, yes, you're going to want to follow some methodologies, uh, some general methodologies uh, that are well accepted and are the proper part uh, of your practice, but the whole point of research is to do new things. Uh, so the start of a data project uh, should be characterized by not being too tightly enforcing how data is being created, uh, what methods are going to be used. It's, it's an exploratory phase, so you should lightly document the trials uh, that you're making to do X, Y, or Z. Uh, and 
in that initial process, you're going to create things that are going to be discarded, some things that will be kept, uh, but you can't expect that the whole, that you will from the start be creating data uh, that you want to hold on to and that you're going to be able to manage the whole project. So that's an important point and you can build off of uh, some initial phases uh, where you do some trial and error and you can decide which way you want to go. And it's at that point that you can start documenting the types of resources uh, you're creating, the types of tools you're using to create them, uh, and uh, that way you start to be able to make strategic decisions about which way your actual questions are going to go based on the data, uh, and then finally where you're going to really uh, deepen your uh, research and investigation and create more data, and if you're doing a semantic project, invest more time in terms of modeling and mapping data to put it together and be able to make the kinds of queries that you want to make on, on that kind of data. And would you say that that's how research data management and digital curation are kind of two separate sides of the same coin, right? Where curation happens if you're, curation is possible if you've managed your data and management should kind of gear towards facilitating kind of longer term curation. I, exactly. I mean, that sounds like the ideal pattern in terms of... Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Otherwise, ideal pattern. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, you have sit data sitting dead in a stockpile uh, that nobody uses or is interested by, or you have data that's live and being curated, but then never gets held by anybody, and so it's not made accessible, and eventually yeah. it's not comprehensible. Thank <laughs> you.